Root memorization, or the drilling of knowledge into our heads through sheer repetition. I hated it, not because I was lazy, but because I thought it was not real learning, and that it stood for oppression, rigidity, lack of creativity, and true ownership of knowledge. And I wasn't so wrong. The educational reformers in the 20th century felt the same way. So they went on a crusade across America to get rid of it from classrooms. Because up until then, education was all about memorizing things. Before printing technologies came through, knowledge was passed on via one's memory. And even with those technologies, they were harder to come by until recently when these guys showed up. So for much of history, good memory equaled good knowledge. But as we know, the world has changed and we no longer need to cram information in our heads. Instead, we now emphasize things like understanding and applying of the knowledge. Cause why not? We have technologies that deliver us any information we want for just a few seconds of our time. Why should I ever memorize that poem if I can read it off of Google? Or better, let him do it. But recently, on my journey to achieve something else, I learned that there is a huge hidden benefit to memorizing things. Daniel Kilov is a memory champion who can memorize a ton very fast. He won medals in the Australian Memory Championships. But what is most surprising about this man is how he ended up a memory athlete at all, considering his history. He sucked at school, he couldn't focus, and was eventually diagnosed with Attention Deficit Disorder. But I guess none of it mattered for his redeeming quality, which was that he tried. He tried to overcome his situation. So in search of solutions, and also by some luck, he found a mentor, Tansel Ali, a memory athlete who taught him tricks for memorizing things. You see, our ability to memorize extensively is not as innate or a gift from God as we think it is. In the word of mnemonists, memorizing an unusual amount of information comes from using cognitive strategies and long hours of training and honing those tricks. And I made a whole video on such a strategy for memorizing a deck of cards, plus how and why it works. You can find it in the description. Anyways, that's how Daniel began his journey of becoming a mnemonist. But what he gained from those years of memorizing and memorizing was more than trophies. He also ended up completing a PhD and becoming a sought-out speaker and educator. But he didn't go from having ADD to a PhD with his new tricks up his sleeve to memorize better. Drilled in information doesn't equal success in today's world, remember? Instead, it was something else that he gained through the years of memorization. It was the ability to focus. While I had been calling memorization this or that name, Cal Newport, on the other hand, called it structured thought process that requires unwavering attention. And I agree, to do it right, it does require a buttload of attention, which makes it hard, which then makes me want to call it all these names. And yes, just memorizing things may not be real learning or being creative, but what makes it so special is that these days we have so little activities in our lives that do this. And we need this. Our brain functions on the use it or lose it principle. Neuroplasticity tells us that our brain changes even after we have become adults. It adapts to our environment by paying close attention to what we do daily and responding by strengthening mental abilities that we use every day and letting go of those that we don't. And this, in this day and age, is terrible news for our ability to focus. When billion dollar masterminds design our digital space so that holding our eyes on it and absorbing information from it becomes not just effortless but pleasurable, and then we spend most of our days on it, we lose our ability to hold our focus for things that require it, like we lose muscles that we stop using. The benefit of memorizing things does not end at being able to impress other people, but is also being able to focus better at things like reading a book, or working on a project, or meditating, or even just staying in a conversation. 
Psychologist Henry Rodiger studied memory athletes to find out what separated these people from the rest of the population and concluded that the biggest difference between memory athletes and the rest of us is in a cognitive ability that's not a direct measure of memory at all but of attention. So I also started to memorize things, some meaningful like poems that I like, and others just to test my limits, not because my memory sucks but my attention span does.